Joel, Carl, Chad, Daryl Branson, Randy, Lyle, Mark, and Tracy Murdoch. So we don't have a quorum yet. And Joel, I actually am doubtful we'll get to a quorum. We're at one, two, three, four, five, including myself for Brian six. So possibly. Well, I'll let you know as we step through if I see others hop on. But we'll uh, go ahead and get the meeting started then. Um, and I guess we could skip number one. But Joel, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, let me just bring it up here and just All right. give me a second. All right. So, well, we have the approval of the minutes, which we can't do because we don't have a quorum. So that takes us to the first net update. Uh, FirstNet Now, FirstNet Board Meeting, and Procurement Update. Great, thank you. Um, so I'm actually going to, Tracy Murdoch, our regional lead is on the phone, and Tracy, I'll offer to you to give any updates first. Hi, Kim, thank you. Yes, we are, like you said this morning on our record meeting, the FirstNet team is standing ready to execute as, as soon as the court renders their decision. We are working hard getting all of the the priorities, the people, the process, and ready to execute as soon as, soon as we can. Like you, we're just um, waiting for that day. As soon as it does, we'll be ready to go. The board meeting met on the 14th, um, business as usual, but again, it's all in that preparation for that first responders network. So nothing really exciting to say other than I can assure you that, that we are doing everything that we can to roll this out as quickly as possible and keep you all informed with the current information as we can. Any questions for me? Any questions for Tracy? Um, I will actually, I was able to screen capture a few of the executive board slides from the meeting on Tuesday. And Ed is going to display them. Um, and Tracy, I won't put you on the spot to talk about them, but I do want to just step through my understanding and please feel free to add. Um, the PSAC, which remember is the 43 agency or organization, I think I have that number right, my, around that number, um, team of stakeholders that uh, provides input to the FirstNet board, they have been um, asked to create a preparing for adoption task team to prepare public safety. Um, and you'll see the bullet points on the left um, to prepare, help prepare public safety users for adoption of FirstNet. So that's uh, pathways to adoption, um, facilitating positive user experience, emerging trends, and a readiness checklist. And Tracy, G, I'm guessing you don't know anything about, is that a tool that they envision turning over to agencies at some point that will help them um, understand what they need to know to adopt? Uh, yes, so what we're doing is just, well, as we've been doing all along is, okay, we know that we need to build the network, that's part one, but the part two is also now we want we need people to subscribe in order to make it a viable network because it has to pay for itself. And so what are the ways to do that? Who are the decision makers? When we were in Grand Junction, for example, I asked questions about who are the decision makers that decide whether they're not going to subscribe and who controls that money and who makes those decisions. So it's just understanding what happens there and then making sure that the potential users understand what this what the system can do for them you know why what's the value added that they would actually choose to subscribe to FirstNet? because in the end it's they're the ones the agencies the first responder users are the ones with all the power and that's why we've been going around saying what is it that you need in a network so that we can build it so that it, it becomes something that's actually use, useful and people want to subscribe does that help yes uh yeah Hey. Um, do you know when that, so that will just be, um, I guess, that, that checklist will be available um, during the state plan decision process or post opt-in, or do you know, maybe that hasn't been determined yet? But. Yeah, no, I don't know that. I know that there, there are several teams that are just getting ready like, to make sure that the customer user experience meets expectations. And so what are those criteria? How is that going to be managed? Now, this is different than just your your current modern day commercial cell phone company, right? And so what are those key elements? Which is why we did those Metro engagements to gather that. So for example, you might recall that in Grand Junction, it was, you know, we need instant support. We need to be able to get this, if there is a problem, resolved instantly, not the 
you know, we'll, okay, we'll get back to you next week. So just those kind of things that how do we differentiate this service from the others? Okay, thank you, Tracy. Um, Ed, if you could scroll down. So another slide I captured was a slide on um, the CCO post award activities. I'm sorry, did somebody say something? Yeah, can, can I, this is Chad, can, can I ask a question yeah. about that? that Please do, uh, Chad, yep. Preparedness um, plan, I guess, or, or the, uh, the strategy. Is, is there any, um, first of all, it, it, it seems interesting that they're not putting out a, uh, a slide that says prepare for an opt-out option. Uh, but past that, um, the, is there any thought being given to the reality that, um, that the subscribers, the potential subscribers are not just agencies. So, uh, so in, in my agency, for example, I, I issue, um, devices to, to my deputies, but I know in, in lots of other agencies, they, they don't issue those devices. Um, they expect, you know, officers and deputies to, to have a smartphone, for example, but they don't, they don't pay those things. That's part of their own, their own personal um, plans. So is there a thought being given to um, more than just uh, public safety agencies being customers? And, and in addition to that, um, individuals that are part of public safety that are, you know, expected to use their own, their own personal um, cell phones, for example, um, for their jobs. Is that, is that being considered? Sheriff, sure, absolutely. It is. We call that the BYOD, bring your own device. And we know that there's many, many volunteers throughout the country that are part of that public safety and that the agencies don't pay for those. So therefore there needs to be that, that avenue for the individuals to, to choose to buy, to subscribe to FirstNet. And also I just wanted to add how you said that it's interesting how not preparing to opt out I would just want to say that I have done everything I can to make sure that you have the information that should that Colorado choose to go that way. Even today, forwarding information from NTIA, who is just saying, okay, here's the process that you need to follow. And that should a state choose to opt out, that, you know, that, that's their choice. And so that is a way for them to go. And so I'm not sure what you're looking at for prepare to opt out because there has been information provided for that. Yeah, I, I guess as much as anything else, maybe the, uh, the the timing was not right. It was just more of a uh, uh, an, an underhanded comment, is all. Understood. Any other adoption questions for Tracy? Um, so, a next the next slide I captured was the Chief Customer Office, which Tracy, you fall under that group, right? Um, the initial post award activities. Um, would you like to speak to this slide? Otherwise, I would just speak to what I heard yesterday, but I'd certainly give you the opportunity. Why don't you go ahead and speak to what you heard and then I can add as required. Okay, so um, they indicated on the call that uh, the star on the left means that they expect within 24 hours of a um, contract, correct Tracy, not necessarily an update on the procurement, but a contract that uh, they would notify the SPOC and the PSAT communities on that award and kind of how things will progress. Um, they will uh, establish kickoff meetings um, by a webinar very quickly thereafter. I'm not sure if, if or how things would be done face-to-face. -face. They didn't really talk about that. Um, and then they'll work to prepare the states for the draft state plan. Um, and then uh, Again, I think these, as I go to the right, these things are grayer, at least for the explanation that was provided yesterday. Um, but the, they're going to uh, be working on the state plan portal, FirstNet content, and then working with the partner to integrate the state plan content, and then actually populate that portal, and uh, then review and approve for release of draft plans in the, at a nationwide SPOC meeting, and there was not a time associated with that. So, Tracy, anything to add? Yep, that's exactly right. So all of this is just kind of laying out the vision of what could happen. All of this is just a, a draft, a straw man, until there is a contract where we can get together with the partner and say, okay, here's what we're, we're thinking. You know, what are you thinking? And so, therefore, those are those joint kickoff meetings uh, where the 
the two teams come together and say, here's what we've been working on, here's how we'd like to, to proceed, we think we need these meetings and talk about these things. As soon as there is a, a contract, the, I will be calling each one of the SPOCs, so I'll be calling you Kim, Brian, Ed, and saying, you know, ta-da, we have it, and here's what we know. And then as they do those kickoff meetings, then we want to make sure that the SPOCs have all the information too. So therefore, there's webinars, there's, we bring them all together for any other SPOC meeting, and those are all being formulated on what's the best way to say, okay, here's the information that we have. Um, here's when the draft plan is getting ready, instead of just saying, here it is in your inbox, it's having a more deliberate way of saying, here's what it is, here's what it looks like. Right now, what we're doing is gathering all of those objectives. So, for example, Colorado has been very clear that rural coverage is a, a priority. You're concerned about just accountability of how do we make sure that everybody's doing what they said they were going to do. And so it's those kind of it, that information that I'm collecting and passing that up so that we can put that in the state plan. And so as soon as you get that criteria checklist that you've been working on, I would appreciate that because then I can say, here's the kind of stuff that Colorado is going to be looking for in the, in the state plan. So that even if it's not in there, we know that we, can, we need to address it with you. And so that's, that's what we're doing. Let's see, did I cover all the, um, those steps? Pretty much. That just kind of gives you that idea of the flow and what we're, we're working on. Again, communicating as everything that we can, as much as we can, with the SPOC. Any questions for Tracy on that um, timeline? Okay. Um, Ed, if you could scroll down. I think the next two are uh, kind of similar. Um, basically, uh, TJ Kennedy talked on the call about uh, the, at the date of, or at when the contract is awarded, that they immediately will be initiating multiple task orders. Um, launching the website for the state plan or, or how that will be done. Um, the task order for the con partner to d develop and deliver 56 state plans, as well as understanding how the state opt-in and opt-out would look. Um, task order to actually begin building the network or desi designing the network, I should say. And then task order four, um, they list as coverage and capacity solutions um, around state and territory task orders and RAND deployment and uh, substantial rural milestones. And then, Ed, if you scroll down to the next, uh, okay, sorry, scroll back up. Um, so, uh, Tracy, that's essentially, again, just that's, that's to show people the work that will be initiated with the contractor at the time of contract award, correct? That is correct. And so, we call those just as soon as the contract award, we're saying, okay, let's get to work. And we've been saying on a long, so just imagine all the Work. It's easy to say, yep, do it, but now just being very clear and deliberate in that. But, yep, that's exactly right. Okay. And then the last um, slide is just an indication of Tracy talked about having multiple task teams within the FirstNet organization across different areas, and they're working on various elements of the task orders and the IDIQ, which is indefinite quantity or indefinite delivery, indefinite quantity, um, which is the type of procurement they're doing. So uh, that just calls out um, the, I believe, the task orders and, and, and understanding that there are different staff depending on their specialties working and different teams assigned to these task orders, right, Tracy? Yep, yep. so you can okay. there's 13 teams when we're a small group. So there's a lot of people doing a lot of those teams. When I talk about a lot of the work there, that, that's the kind of stuff that they're working on, the kind of topics and things that they're building out so that it can be, hey, just a first class network here. There's more than just a network, right? And it's all the business processes that are all going to making that happen. Right. Any questions for Tracy on those slides? Um, I will add that too, uh, there was a resolution at the meeting to ask Chief Harlan McEwen to stay on as the chair of the PSAC through the contract award and maybe some early dates. They didn't assign an ending date to that. And then um, I will just note in the press, they stated there was a resolution that was not voted on um, by the board. Originally, the board had a resolution to consider that would have allowed them to, um, I believe, assign authority to FirstNet leadership to deal with the contract um, if an announcement were made by the court, but that resolution was not acted upon, and we have not seen anything from the court. So, and Tracy, I presume you would let us know if you had. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
oh no no we were all we're all like okay when 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 so no we're just in hot standby okay so that's all that the executive board um first net i mean spoke about two days ago does anybody have any questions about that I, oh, okay. Um, I will add one minor um, bit of information. Uh, last Friday, March 10th, we were advised that the AT&T Senior Vice President for FirstNet, the Vice President for Public Safety, and the AT&T Colorado Vice President met with the governor, uh, his policy advisors, and Kevin Klein with Department of Homeland Security and Emergency Management. Um, Brian was not advised of the meeting until after um, but just to let you know that the governor spoke with um, AT&T leadership and uh, AT&T talked about where they were in the award process and technology and priority and preemption and their need to meet a minimum number of subscribers is required in the RFP and how they could partner with states on infrastructure. Um, we, it was shared that the governor has some good questions on the relation uh, to rural broadband and the convergence of IP with land mobile radio. And um, AT&T was told that the state will be doing an alternative plan RFP um, just to ensure that we do our due diligence. So again, none of us were present in that meeting, but we wanted to share with you um, that that meeting occurred. Any questions? Who is there from oh. who is there from AT and T? Is it the president of AT and T and who else? That was the senior vice president for FirstNet. The oh, vice for president for AT and T. AT and T senior vice president for FirstNet is what was described oh, okay. to us. Okay. And who else? The AT and T vice president for public safety and their vice president for Colorado. Okay. Thanks. So. Kim, is, um, is, there, yeah. is there a known reason why why you guys were not were not made aware of that meeting? I guess how did you find out too? We found out through Kevin Klein with DHSCM. He shared it with Brian um, right after it occurred. He was invited at the last minute. We found out. Um, so uh, no, I mean that was directly with AT and T. There's no indication that FirstNet was involved in that planning, and and we've shared with Tracy and. Um, you know, Tracy knows that um, uh, we we absolutely want contact with Brian or our team prior um, from a first net perspective with any interaction um, or a, a, a courtesy notice of interaction else with other people in the state. So, yeah, makes sense. Sure, Kim. I wasn't aware then. I just want to confirm. You said that the AT and T senior vice president for first net. There's three people from, from AT&T. That was one. The other one was the vice president for public safety and the yes. vice president for Colorado? Yes. Thank you. That's how they were described to us. I don't have any names, so, yeah. And, and they met when? On March 10th. Okay, thank you, with the governor and Kevin Klein. And the governor's policy staff, yeah. Policy staff. The Adam yeah. Barron? He was one of them, yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, again, we have no reason to believe that um, FirstNet asked at to do that meeting. It seems at t did that on their own. Um, if I did send out uh, earlier this week or late last week, we notify our um, there was an, uh, an article published in Radio Resource Magazine that Colorado is publishing its RFP in late March or early April, and that um, we don't know if that impacted or their uh, meeting or they had already had that meeting plan. We simply don't know. So, so any questions on uh, the FirstNet update? Then I'm actually going to pause because I saw Paula join. Scott Newman joined, and then I see a couple other phone numbers, um, and we're only one person short of a quorum. So, did I have anybody else join? Hey, Cam, this is Paula. Jim Finlinson's also with me. Okay, thanks, Paula. And Steve Leander's on. Oh, thanks, Steve. And I show. Oh, sorry, one other person? 
Yep. Okay. Uh, Joel, we're still one short, but I'll let you know. <laughs> we're getting close. All right. Um, Kim, do you have an so um, update on the plan review process of where you are on how that will go, who will be looking at it, and the criteria they'll be using? So the, um, the document we've been working on has been paused while I've been working on the RFP with Signals Analytics because they're going to support both of their, those activities as well. Um, so that's been our focus. That will not be our focus here in the next few weeks, and we will um, be working on that more actively uh, because that is something we want to get done. And then later in the um, agenda, I'm going to discuss the face-to-face -face meeting where we are going to determine that process with the governing board's guidance. But none of that will, will be done without the governing board's direction on how they want it to go. So. Okay, so the sooner I have that checklist, the sooner I can get it to the plans team, just to say that, okay, here's the kind of stuff that we need to be making, or not kind of stuff, but here are all the things that we need to make sure are in the plans. And they're starting on as much as they can in advance now. Okay, yeah, our goal is to have something uh, pretty solid as soon as possible. So. Um, yeah, we only have so many resources on the team, but. Okay, uh, so the next item is the state assumed RAN planning update. So as I mentioned, and you saw the article, uh, we are going to be publishing our RFP um, by the first week in April at the latest. And um, we will go over that RFP in detail with all of you at the next meeting. Um, we can't do it until we publish it. Uh, and I'm, I'm, other than um, trying to also finalize the scoring group, the uh, I, I evaluators for the RFP group, and then people who can participate as non-scoring subject matter experts, that's really kind of um, been the team's, well, my, my focus, um, Ed and Sarah are able to work a little bit on it because they are funded for some non p activities now. Um, otherwise, they've been working on the website update and outreach and education efforts. So um, as soon as it's public, we will provide a much deeper dive on it. We just are precluded from doing that until it's published. So does anybody have any questions in general about the RFP? Okay, uh, just quickly, the working groups. Um, I'm pleased to share that we had a great hour-long meeting on the February 21st with Chief Harlan McEwen. He, uh, discussed the, the work of the Peace Act to date. There were a number of you on that call and a number of working group people on that call, and I did share the recording with only uh, FirstNet Colorado Governing Body and working group folks after. And um, uh, he gave a, just, we had the hour for people to ask him questions and for him to explain kind of the Peace Act's approach to things, and I thought it went well. So um, I don't know if anybody who participated has anything to add either. Okay. Um, the signal state plan support overview and timeline. Could you actually stop sharing your screen for just a yes. second? I forgot to have you. Oh, oh. Okay, so I'm just going to share quickly. Um, I am pleased to announce that we have signals um, analytics under contract until December 31st, 2017. Now, um, their contract originally ended on June 3rd. And they are doing about $350,000 worth of additional work for state plan and SLIGP allowable activities. So I just quickly wanted to display this and show it to all of you that they are now um, going to be participating. They have been informally, but formally participating in our governing body and working group. They, um, we will provide, have them have the ability to provide public notice and review public notice review and comments as needed on any additional notices. We expect to see potentially something from the NTIA and SCC at some point. Uh, we don't know when. And then they still can provide outreach and education um, support. But specific to the state plan assessment process, they're going to be doing market research on anticipated adoption. And uh, Randy, I'd actually like to turn it over to you to talk about how we're going to go about some of that market research and how these, this group will be engaged or will ask their agencies to be engaged? Okay, sure, okay. Um, basically, what we're doing, is it's a, an exercise that includes a, uh, a mixture of you know, some early uh, 
in, individual I interviews to uh, understand, uh, you know, basically the the you know distribution channels that are, are relevant to first responders and and to understand a lot of the wholesale retail business relationships that happen there. And uh, basically, what we're going to do then is have a uh, survey similar to the survey that we did in 2015 that will um, you know push out. Uh, broadly to, to public safety entities uh, within the state, where we're going to ask a lot of the detailed questions about, uh, you know, pricing and bundling and, and, you know, sort of how those decisions are being made. And we think it'll be actually very, very uh, powerful uh, in that it'll be, I think, responsive to a lot of the questions that uh, we often hear, uh, you know, during uh, the governing board uh, discussions. And, and maybe, Ed, if, I don't know if, Ed, you want to say say anything about kind of the the process i know we, we've talked a lot about sort of the the nuts and bolts uh yeah i can uh, i can say a little bit about that um what we want to do is uh we want to make sure that we're going to have a very limited time uh to get the information out and so uh we're going to do some work on the uh the back end uh to form up uh the kind of questions that we want to ask but uh, when when we actually uh, send this out, we want to do it in a coordinated fashion. Uh, we'll use our working groups uh, to get um, the information out about that it's coming and what it is and why it's important. Um, and we'll also coordinate our efforts uh, with you all because uh, you have uh, channels um, that have been really important to us in this whole initiative. And we'll want you to have those people that are in your channels to participate as well. So we will send out um, a, uh, there'll be a blog written by one of our team members that will be talking about uh, what it is, where it is, when it is. We'll have some facilitated discussions where we get in on a webinar and we direct people to, you know, what we're looking for, answer questions, and then help them walk through that. But we'll coordinate all of our efforts through the blog. The newsletter will actually uh, go to the blog. We'll get as many people involved so that we can get as, as wide of a breadth of uh, understanding and, um, you know, from all the different disciplines as well as all the different uh, uh, rural as opposed to urban and dense urban, et cetera. So that's, that's just kind of a real basic frame up. Uh, but uh, what all you have to be concerned about is that we will have a, a schedule of event with a timeline and a real specific uh, events that we're going to try and accomplish in a very short time, then we will be asking uh, for your participation as it makes sense. Um, thanks, Ed. And this, all of this work that uh, we are doing um, as part of the state plan assessment process will also be shared with FirstNet um, as well, just so everybody's aware. Yeah, let me look online. Um, so another thing that will be occurring is uh, we're using the, um, some data from the state patrol uh, that um, from their vehicles as they drive the state and we hope to be able to analyze and map commercial carrier coverage once we know who's, who's first net, who FirstNet's partner is. Uh, we'll be assessing key criteria. This is additional consultation topics that FirstNet will allow us to consult with them on around network hardening local operational performance network SLAs and performance cybersecurity and devices and applications. Uh, as we've talked about before, uh, Signals will be creating a tool to support agencies in understanding the true adoption costs based on what they pay now versus what they might pay um, with FirstNet once all of that information is shared through the state plan process. Um, we, they, so Signals will do a comprehensive coverage by phase assessment of the FirstNet state plan once it's provided. Um, they'll assess the uh, operating capability to, um, and if we are made aware of any, uh, the amount of investment to create um, the IOC and the FOCs of the basically the operating capability levels as the network is deployed in Colorado. They'll assess investments over Colorado to the degrees to which that information is shared by FirstNet and their partner. They'll be creating that regional and state agency checklist. Again, where FirstNet might have a checklist, we're doing our own checklist to help um, you understand the uh, state plan decision process and then some tools to understand adoption, uh, a governor's briefing template, and, um, and then Signals has the ability to travel here if needed to support 
uh, formal discussion. So that's the work that's being done on your behalf with that money. Um, our priority in the short term is going to be to come up with our kind of internal benchmarking um, for the state plan assessment so we can provide that to first set. All of you can help us formalize that and then what that process is going to look like over the next, um, I'll call it nine months, hopefully. Uh, and then um, the last item is our planning meeting agenda. And I'm actually, since we don't even have a quorum, I'm reluctant to uh, go over or spend much time on an agenda. But if you all have some thoughts about um, what that agenda should look like, again, it's to help us determine what the governing body wants to look like, that process to look like over the next nine months. And we were going to try and have that face-to-face -face meeting on April 20th, but it turns out Brian will be out of town. And so we are needing to um, reschedule it. We're reluctant to schedule it on the May meeting. We almost feel like that's too late. So I've sent out a doodle poll when I sent out the meeting minutes to ask for you to let us know some other dates. I've proposed some other dates, either morning or afternoon, that might work. And I would ask that uh, you respond to that so we can try to get as many people there as possible. If it's a morning meeting, um, we can pay for breakfast. If it's an afternoon meeting, we'll get you there at lunchtime and pay for your lunch to be there. Anticipate three to four hours worth of work. So. Um, that's all I have, Joel, on the FirstNet update, unless anybody has any questions. And somebody is talking. We have some background noise. Okay. Thanks, Kim. Uh, next item on the agenda is the outreach and education update. Uh, Ed? Yeah, so um, we're still uh, working uh, diligently to get everything done. We're uh, closer than we've ever been before. Um, we have, uh, as a, a team, we've decided that uh, we, uh, uh, there are a couple of activities that we need to begin uh, in April since uh, we still uh, haven't had that formal announcement of who the partner is going to be. We were actually uh, planning uh, for a May, June, um, get out to at least the nine all hazard regions and uh, the big conferences. Um, but uh, Kim brought up a really good point uh, about a week ago that uh, we really need to go out and start to engage um, as many of our all hazard regions as we can about the RFP that's going to be out on the street and what that actually means. And uh, so uh, we will uh, we will begin uh, when it makes sense. Uh, we'll we'll go to uh, the all hazard region. But right now I'm working on at least getting on the agenda for 15 or 30 minutes uh, so that we can just come in and briefly explain. Uh, the RFP uh, when it's going to be uh, when it's going to be uh, uh, released and uh, what that means for uh, our stakeholders and how it actually fits into this process. Uh, we uh, will be doing that through uh, April and May and then sometime in the month of May uh, with the right information from FirstNet. Uh, we'll begin to have those face-to-face -face meetings with our nine all hazard regions uh, where we'll uh, start to walk through um, again. Uh, with the information that we have, what opt-in looks like, and uh, anything that we may need to consider if uh, if we decide that uh, opt-out is an option that we need to look at. So uh, anyway, uh, a lot of plans there. Uh, we actually, uh, the SLV has stepped up to the plate, and uh, we'll have our first meeting with them. It'll be a phone conversation on the 23rd, uh, where we'll talk about the state RFP and what that means. Um, in other things, uh, as far as uh, the newsletter, uh, website, and uh, marketing, uh, we've been working very hard in uh, trying to update the website, as you know, for some time now. Uh, we are going to submit everything uh, to our communications team here at OIT uh, next week. And um, after uh, we submit it to them, they have uh, promised that they would uh, get it turned around to us very quickly. So we anticipate that by the middle of April, uh, you'll have a fresh look with the website as well as uh, we'll be using a uh, full on uh, the new blogger application. We'll ask you to look into that so that you can keep up to date. Uh, what that's going to do for us is that if Brian or Kim or myself or Sarah or anybody with this initiative uh, uh, needs to get some key information out, they'll be able to blog that out. And uh, if you're connected in the right way, you can get that information as it occurs. Uh, again, we'll still use our newsletter and we'll point back to Blogger, um, 
but that's uh, very important. And uh, Sarah is going to put together a video for us uh, just to kind of walk you through how the website has changed and what Blogger means and how you can get uh, uh, get to using that. Um, and again, we still encourage you. We've got a great training uh, site portal out there uh, for uh, anybody to come in who maybe just doesn't have any understanding. Uh, it's been some time now, right? Even uh, you know, there have been a lot of people come on in the last year that may not know anything about FirstNet. We ask you to take them into the portal uh, on our website. And uh, you can do that by, uh, for those of you who are looking at the screen, just go to our homepage. And uh, in our uh, feed down here, we have right here this free public safety broadband training. That'll take them to code train. They can do a search FirstNet, and then they'll be off and running. Anyway, that's all I have, unless anybody has questions for me. Okay, that's it. Thank you, Ed. Uh, Ad time update. I guess that's going to be me. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we've uh, noticed that we've had some problems with our DIA sites, and uh, it's been kind of an ongoing issue. First, we had some electrical issues. We couldn't get it hooked up. We finally got it hooked up. We got it running. Everything was working fine for a while. And when we transitioned over to the virtual core, we found out that we had more problems. And we're looking at it right now, trying to figure out exactly what's going on there. But it appears to be some kind of an issue with the provisioning of the base stations. So we're going to have to get GD out there to take a look at it. Right now, it's somewhat of a problem. But uh, basically, the DIA sites are currently offline. Everything else is working the way it's supposed to be and uh, working well. Uh, we've got a couple of issues up in the Brighton area where it looks like some of our antennas are probably not mounted quite as high as they need to be. So we're taking a look at some options there. But uh, otherwise, we're in pretty good shape on the ADCOM site at this point. And since that's all I got, then we will move on to legal issues with Kim, unless somebody has some questions about ADCOM. All right, thanks, Joel. Um, so uh, this past week on Monday, Brian and Bob Pfeiffer and Ken Fellman, who's our special AAG, were in DC at the FCC speaking with commissioners, legal staff, and the heads of their public safety um, groups within each commissioner's office to have a discussion about the FCC's role in the uh, opt-out process. And uh, so as that was officially an ex parte discussion. And so can you display that document, Ed? Um, the FCC document? Nope. Yeah. Not that one? Yeah, that's the one. Okay. Yep. Yeah. No, the FCC document. Sorry, it was the tab. Yeah, it says FCC. So this document was filed with the FCC on the day after the meeting. And uh, because it was an ex parte discussion, we have to make public notice, and, it, and it's part of an, an NPRM. We have to make public, public notice of the topics that were discussed. And really, largely, it was just around ensuring that the states are given the same time frame and opportunity to demonstrate um, their interoperability requirements as they were um, as the as FirstNet has been allowed. Right? You know, some of our comments to the FCC were that FirstNet has taken five years to step through a process that um, the, the, the legislation um, says has to be done in 180 days, but the, the interpretation of the legislation is that 180 days full RFP or beginning an RFP. So that's what the purpose of the ex parte discussion was, was to state our position on why the FCC should be um, more flexible with states to provide them the same opportunity the FirstNet has been provided over the years. So uh, Brian shared that they thought those conversations went well, and um, we don't know when the FCC will be providing or publishing additional comments on that process or official rules. We're not sure yet, but we wanted to share that that conversation did occur on your behalf and that these are the official notes from that conversation. So I wasn't present, but if you have any questions, please do let me know. All right. Thank you, Kim. That takes us to old slash new business. And uh, again, Kim with the group. Yep. So I have um, the motion. We won't be able to act on that motion because we don't have a quorum. 
Um, but again, we just ask you to look at that PSDS partnership agreement. Really, it's just a matter of signing something that re uh, reflects what we're already doing. Um, the face-to-face -face meeting date, I would ask you to go look at the doodle poll. Uh, and then the state broadband office, um, I don't know, I think we shared that the, the state and it was shared through the state of the state address in January that the governor created the state broadband office um, and that there was a new executive director of the state broadband office hired. He started yesterday. His name is Anthony or Tony Neal Graves. His focus is the rural broadband initiative. And at this point, there's nothing changing within the first net activities. So um, he is today tra uh, in Alamosa with Brian on a rural broadband activity. Um, but at some point, I imagine he'll meet you all. But again, as uh, with regards to how the FirstNet Colorado program is working, nothing is changing. Brian is still the stock. Um, we're still reporting uh, the entire office and our group still reports through SUMA, the CIO. So just wanted to share that with all of you. And then although we don't have anything listed, I do have a few new items. I wanted to share that um, the NTIA recently was audited by the Office of Inspector General on the SLIGP grant. Uh, they did share that as a result, states will likely not be audited, which is a relief. Um, and if there's anything of concern that this group needs to know about, we'll let you know. The audit was just published today. We are also working with the NTIA to do a draft budget to potentially turn back no more than 200 or $250,000 of the grant in support of SLIGP 2.0 grants if uh, those are ever issued. And those would be grants that would be made available post-2017, post the state affirmative opt-in, and uh, would only be available for opt-in states to support outreach and education and adoption um, in one to two years, uh, so 2018, 2019 timeframe. NTAA asked states to look at how much they could give back. So we're looking at um, proposing giving back no more than 10% of our grant, which still leaves us plenty of cushion should something come up in the future. So just wanted to make you all aware of that. Um, wanted to share that there is, through the Department of Homeland Security, um, under the uh, guidance of the Homeland Security Advisory Council, there is going to be an NG911 working group stood up that will have to report on a number of activities uh, before August that will report through the HSAC and back to the governor's office and I think maybe the legislature. Mm -hmm. And there's actually a number of people um, on this board that are participating mm -hmm. there. Carl is representing rural PSAP. Chief Ribeiro is representing CACP. Chief Crap, Chief Crap is representing um, the fire chief. And I will be representing OIT as a non-voting member um, since we are trying to look at the big picture of uh, how networks can support various services across the state. And I don't know, Carl or Mark, we don't know a whole lot yet. The group hasn't been officially stood up, but I just want to give you the opportunity to add anything if you'd like. No, I'm really, really just waiting it. for some, some contact information and moving forward. Um, Daryl, I might be giving you a call. I'm sure you got quite a bit of information to maybe help bring me up to speed as well. So Kim, this is Paula. Yes, Paula. Uh, I'm excited to hear that you're gonna be participating in that group. I know it sounds like you don't have voting members, but I'm, I am glad to hear that you're gonna be part of the group. Thank you. Yeah, we were, um, as the group was being formed, we expressed, con um, uh, uh, I mean, use the right, correct uh, adjective. We shared that we thought there needed to be um, some uh, collaboration with OIT being the entity that's doing first net planning, but then also with um, OIT being the entity that supports um, networks, public safety networks in the state in general. So uh, that, that's kind of how that happened. Um, yeah, as this group gets its official charter, we'll come back and share that with you. And again, we know that this group and that group don't overlap, perhaps, except in participation um, in name. But we know that uh, a lot of what that group will be looking at will be, um, you know, in the long term, impactful to public safety communication across the state. One of the links I sent to you in our uh, meeting information was, uh, I thought, a pretty good um, op-ed about really needing to look at 
public safety communications from end to end, and that's from the P staff to the responder in the field. And I'm not talking about land mobile radio. Um, I'm talking about the public safety communications in the data space and how uh, it could be naive nationally to to think that those networks should be built independently with um, different goals in mind, and that really it is a holistic view. And and I don't know if everybody on this group shares that um, vision or belief, but um, you know, it could be the country would be spending a lot of money on duplicative efforts and not achieving really what's the, in the best interest of public safety um, if the big picture isn't looking at being looked at. And that's what we try to encourage this group and then other groups uh, to do. So I'll uh, I'll get off my soapbox, and if anybody else has anything to add, please do. Um, okay. Well, this is Carl. Oh. I'm sorry, go ahead, Carl. When we went, uh, or when I went to 911 to Washington, we did meet with some staff members and they did bring up FirstNet and how it connects to NextGen. And we did bring up a lot of those same issues that it, they need to be done together or, you know, at least communicating back and forth. Thanks, Carl. This is Gerald Branson. Uh, kind of adding yes. on to that, you know, the uh, NextGen 911 Act, I know you're aware. Um, it hasn't been introduced yet, but it, it's uh, there's a draft that was circulated. 911 goes to Washington, and it um, specifically calls out the need for collaboration between FirstNet and uh, next generation 911 deployments. So I think it's a good sign. It shows that they're they're at least getting the message. How that Thank translates you, into policy is uh, another matter, but we'll see how that goes. Policy and financing, right? <laughs> or funding. Yeah, and thank you, Daryl. I failed to mention again that there, um, as Daryl mentioned, there is a 911 act that might be put forward um, from a bipartisan, uh, bipartisan legislators to look at um, how nationwide 911 can be addressed moving forward and the funding certainly aspects of that. And then um, Daryl's boss, Lynn, will actually be the PUC voting member to that state 911 group as well, just as information yeah. to all of you. Yeah. Kim, I don't know if it's just me, but I'm I'm losing you. Uh oh. Can you hear me now? Yeah, it's hear. fading out really bad, but it sounds like you're okay. back now. All I right, it might have been our internet connection. So. Yeah, we're Thanks, fine. I can hear you fine. Okay. So anyway, and then the last item. Um, on new business, uh, um, we uh, internally at OIT paid for one admission to IWCE, which is not going to be used. And in lieu of just having to eat that money from a grant perspective, we'd like to offer last minute, we are sending a few of you to IWCE, all expenses paid. It's the week of the 27th in Washington, D.C. Um, you can go for as long or as short a period of, or not Washington, D.C., Las Vegas, my apologies, the week of the 27th in Las Vegas. You can go for as long or as short a period of time in that week. The event starts on Monday, but really the core of it and the vendor show is Wednesday, Thursday, and part of Friday. So I would propose again, we can transfer that attendance to anyone who might be interested in going. We would be pleased to send someone. Um, you can just work with me offline. We will reimburse 100% of your expenses as well. So um, that's kind of the last bit I have, Joel, on old and new business. Okay, thank you, Kim. So that leaves us with any questions or general discussion for the group at this point? Mm -hmm. Okay, not hearing much on that one. So then we have a list of dates. Again, that IWCE conference, uh, APCO will have a broadband summit in DC in May. We could pay all expenses for that for anybody who can go or is interested. And the Public Safety Communications Research Conference in San Antonio is uh, June 12th through 14th. We could pay for that as well. On a uh, side note, I, we failed to mention it before, but Ed and I and some stakeholders across the state were present in Boulder last week with the PSCR to provide operational input to what mission critical voice um, metrics and key performance indicators should look like. So as PSCR is working on a lot of these grant funded activities, I think they're going to um, reach out to us more often to get line 
uh, responders here in Colorado to participate in that. So um, we were pleased to have that go on. We'll keep you updated as those things occur. If you have interest in that, um, please let us know as well in the future. Um, we can add your name to a list of people we call on as they have events. Um, again, our next meeting will be the 20th. It will not be a face-to-face -face meeting. And um, please go out and submit your availability via Doodle for a face-to-face -face meeting. That's all we have. Okay, thank you. All right. Well, that then I guess much it does. And uh, we never got a quorum, unfortunately, so. Okay, well, thank you, Kim. Thanks, everyone. We'll send out Thank the you. link after. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.